Hi folks, I love motors and one of my favorite types are DC gear motors. They have a lot of torque and they're really easy to work with. In this video, I'm going to show you six different ways to work with DC gear motors. And where appropriate, I'll have links to separate videos to specifically cover these methods with an Arduino or with a Raspberry Pi. DC gear motors come in a variety of sizes, shapes, and RPMs, ranging from the small gear motor on the left all the way to this large gear motor on the right. And the great news is that they all work pretty much the same way when it comes to interfacing them with an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. DC gear motors do more than just turn. They can alternate directions, they can turn at different RPM speeds, and when properly controlled, they can stop on a dime. For those of you who may be new to my video tutorials, I like to move quickly and let's dig in. Six different ways. First way is a standard switch. The second way is a transistor. The third way is a relay. The fourth way is also a relay, but pre-packaged in this SparkFun kit. The fifth way is an H-Bridge chip. And the sixth and final way is also an H-Bridge chip, but one that has additional functionality as part of a SparkFun packaged kit. The first four are just switches. They will only allow you to turn the motor on and generally speaking, rotate it in one direction. The second two as H-Bridges let you do a lot more. And that's what I think is really cool. It's also worth noting that the switch and the relays are what we would consider mechanical components whereas the transistor and the H-Bridge chips are what we call solid state. Switches are pretty straightforward. Connect the positive tab of your power source to one terminal of the motor. Connect the negative through the switch. Turning the switch on, you'll notice this turns clockwise. We simply swap the leads. Now you notice counterclockwise. A relay is another type of switch. When you put five volts across these two pins, this pin will become connected to this pin. I've got my benchtop power supply set to five volts. I'm going to take the two leads and you'll see when I touch the two leads across the two pins, you'll hear a click and that click is the connection closing. Okay, let's hook it up. The battery's positive, goes straight to the motor. The battery's negative, goes to the bottom middle pin of the relay. The relay's output pin goes to the other motor tab. One side of the relay's contacts are connected to the positive voltage. The other side is left unconnected. And when I t touch it to the negative, turns the relay on, which turns the motor. Click on the Arduino or the Raspberry Pi to see a video on how to control a DC motor with a relay with one of these boards. This is the SparkFun Beefcake Relay Control Kit. It has a few extra features that make it super convenient for use with an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. To hook it up, the first of the three headers here, it goes to five volts. The middle one is your control pin, and the final one is the ground. The left two tabs are normally open, so again, the battery's positive, goes straight to the motor, the negative, comes to one tab and then it leads out from there to the motor. A control pin, the second pin here, which would normally be activated by a microcontroller like an Arduino, is nothing more than pushing out five volts. I've got five volts on my breadboard rails right here. So you can see when I push it in, the LED lights up and the motor turns on. For more information on how to hook up SparkFun's Beefcake Relay Control with an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, click on one of the links below. This is a TIP120 Power Darlington resistor that I purchased from Adafruit. These are great, $2.50 for three of them, and despite their small size, they can actually power quite a bit, this particular chip up to five amps continuous. Let's take a look at how they work. Like any transistor, it has a base, a collector, and an emitter. When we apply a small amount of current, like a five volt signal from an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi to the base, it connects the current and the emitter. Let's take a look at the setup. The leftmost pin, the base, has a 100 ohm resistor, which connects to this green jumper cable. We'll use this to trigger the start and the stop. In this case, we'll be shorting it on our breadboard to five volts, but it would also be your pin from the Arduino. The second pin, is the collector pin. It's connected directly to the motor via this orange jumper cable. The third pin is the emitter and it's connected via this blue jumper wire to the ground. 
There's a diode here, and while it's not totally necessary, it's a pretty good idea to use one, and they're very inexpensive. What this does is it means that the flow will only flow from the emitter to the collector. So it'll only flow from this side over to this way. What that means is it prevents the current from backflowing and eventually uh, potentially frying a chip like on an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. The reason to be concerned is when you're powering a motor, it consumes energy, but when you stop that motor, it will coast. And when it coasts, it can actually create its own power, which could push itself back into the microprocessor and harm it. A diode helps take care of that. And finally, just to show, I've got five volts coming into my breadboard's power supply right here. And then the battery's negative tab is connected via this green jumper wire, so we've got a common ground. So you've probably noticed by now, it's really quite similar to a relay. You're connecting one lead of the motor directly to the battery, and the other's getting switched. The difference is that this transistor has no moving parts. The H-Bridge chip we're going to use is from SparkFun. You can see it right here. And there's a great tutorial from NYU's ITP program that I'm going to follow along here. You can follow along more closely on the website on your own. Let's take a closer look now at how the chip is set up. The pin layout for the H-Bridge is as follows. Pin number one is this black jumper wire. When it's connected to positive five volts, that enables the motor. Pin number two is this green jumper wire. When it goes from ground to positive five volts, that enables the motor to turn in one direction. The next pin is this pin three. That's the red jumper wire that connects directly to one of the motor terminals. Pins four and five go to ground. Pin six connects to the other motor terminal. That's the black cable here. Pin seven is this blue jumper cable. When it's pulled high to five volts, that enables the motor to turn the other direction. And pin eight is the red cable here that connects directly to the positive power source for your motor. On the right side, we only use pins 12 and 13. They're connected to ground. And the last pin, pin 16, is connected to positive five volts. You'll need a separate power source, of course, five volts to supply the chip's power and the separate power source for the motor. I've got five volts coming in here. My motor's positive source is connected to pin eight via this red cable, and then I'm connecting the motor power source's ground over here to establish a common ground. Okay, quick review. Pin one I've got pulled high that will enable the motor. Pin two is the green cable, currently pulled low. Pin three is the red cable. It connects directly to one of the motor tabs. Pins four and five are ground. Pin six is connected to ground. Pin seven is connected to the other motor terminal via this black and then yellow jumper wire. And pin eight is connected directly to the positive power source for the motor. When I pull pin two, the motor rotates in one direction. And when I pull pin six, the motor rotates in the other direction. You'll notice I don't actually have to pull these high, I just have to take them off the ground. All right, we're gonna end with my favorite. This is a SparkFun motor driver based on this chip right here. It can drive two DC motors at a constant current of a little over an amp. It can peak out at 3.2 amps, and it's great. It's just a dual H-Bridge chip. It's similar to the one we just looked at, but it's a great package, and I really like it. Let's take a look. Okay, take a look at pin layout. Pin 1 goes to the positive power source for the motor. Pin 2 goes to positive 5 volts. Pin 3 goes to ground. Pins 4 and 5 go to the two terminal tabs of your DC gear motor. The pins on the other side of the chip are for the Arduino or another controller. I'll cover that in a separate video. I'm using an input shield from the folks over at Liquidware. It's one of my favorite shields, and this is really a great combination. Move the joystick left, the motor rotates the one direction, increasing speed as I move the joystick further to the left. And the same thing when I go to the right. And as my parting tip, there's a saying there are two types of people, those who use fuses and those who will. When you're working with DC gear motors, use fuses. There's a great way to save your butt, save a, uh, prevent a chip from blowing out. They're inexpensive. There are many different types of them. And use diodes as well to prevent back current from frying a perfectly good Arduino or Raspberry Pi or something more, certainly a lot more expensive than this two cent part. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, a subscribe, comment below. Otherwise, that's all folks. Thanks.